In this part of the video, we will show you many of the different types of sarcophytins we have here in the Garf Genetic Bank. I am always amazed at all of the different types of sarcophytins that are of coming in from different collectors. We have been trading for exotic sarcophytins for several years. This is one of Sally Joe's beautiful sarcophytins from the top. You can see from all of the different types of sarcophytins why they're so enjoyable. It's very relaxing to watch the sarcophytins move in the current. Sarcophytins are good neighbors. As I mentioned before, they can live with other corals without causing any problem. You can create an entire reef with different types of soft corals with sarcophytins as the main ones. All of these corals can be reproduced in captivity by cloning and I will show you how we do cloning on a large scale. Captive raised corals are much more hardy than corals collected from the wild and many of them have been propagated several times. We have some soft corals that have been propagated for the last six years. These captive raised corals have been removed from the show tanks and we are cutting the crowns from each of the corals. You will notice that part of the crown of the coral is left on the stalk. This allows the coral to grow back faster. We are using a process called symbiont recombination so each of the corals will be cut into the same bowl of water. When we are making soft coral cuttings we combine the symbionts from the most hardy corals with the corals from other tanks. You'll notice this lobo fighting has been doing very well in captivity so we will remove the crown. This crown will be cut into several pieces and this coral will donate the hardy symbiont algae and bacteria that live inside of it. You can see from the base of these corals that they're grown on rubble in an aquarium, all different types of uh, rubble on the bottom. Each of the pieces will be further cut into small fragments. This rose lobophyton lends itself well to being cut from the center out like a piece of pie. There are several different methods for attaching these coral fragments to the rocks and we will show you several different ways of doing it. Anytime we can keep a part of the base, the crown, and the stalk, it makes for a better cutting. 
we have found that when these three parts of the soft coral are included in one cutting, they heal much faster. I am now checking for corals that are too large and when I find pieces that are large I cut them into several pieces. Smaller cuttings often attach better than larger cuttings. Symbiont recombination. Gently squeeze out water and fluids and allow the corals to reabsorb water and new symbionts. These cuttings are left in the symbiotic soup for 30 minutes. During that time it is important that you agitate the water and do not allow it to become low in oxygen. It is also important that the water be kept at the same temperature as the reef. Zoxanthellae. This is a view through the microscope of the symbiotic algae that lives inside of our corals. They're a photosynthetic diaflagellate. There are many strains of Zoxanthellae and bacteria that make corals adapt to captivity. During the years of combining corals from around the world, new strains are possible in captivity. <laughs>